So we know that MDMA is a pretty predictable drug. It makes people uh, experience euphoria, it makes them sociable, it help them connect with others. But there are other things about MDMA that are not so predictable, things like self-insight. And that was, that was the thing that really drew my attention for, for, for quite a long time. So I asked myself um, a question, what makes people experience self-insight? And self-insight is this ability to um, understand one's emotional state, to gain insight into emotional uh, problems. Um, so I've used, oh, it keeps changing. Um, so I've used um, Zinberg's interaction model to help me understand and position myself within um, the whole concept of, um, of drug-induced experience. Um, and we've, we've heard so much about drug and set and setting um, uh, throughout over the past two days. Um, so it's, it seems like a focal element of every, any substance use. Um, but I think in particularly in the, when it comes to MDMA, um, I was quite struck how much things are actually happening around, around that topic over the past two days. Um, so what we know um, in terms of uh, MDMA, the drug in itself, what's really important is dose. Um, so some of the symptoms, some of the effects are dose dependent. Um, the other thing is purity. So whether we actually uh, consider um, a pure MDMA or a mixture of other substances, especially in, in, in the context of ecstasy use, um, and frequency of use. So some people suggest that um, certain effects uh, were off over, over some time, so that's also something to bear in mind. But I was, what I specifically am interested in is um, the set and setting. So the way I, I, I um, kind of categorized setting is all the whole range of uh, personal qualities, things like motivation for drug use, so why people are actually taking MDMA, personality traits, so what is it about the person that makes it different in the experience, and things like emotional intelligence, so the ability to have the uh, introspective uh, experience and understanding of one's emotional um, experience. Um, and then the setting, finally, so the whole social context in which un un uh, intoxication occurs. So um, I reckon it might be different in the club with the with a bunch of strangers at home with friends and a, in a therapeutic environment with a partner or uh, a couple of therapists. Um, so my research questions were really uh, to find out, well, first of all, what is the, the role of personality and whether MDMA users are in any way different to the rest of the population. Um, secondly, what is the role of motivation for, for drug use, whether it can influence the effects of MDMA. Um, but also, what is the role of emotion intelligence? Um, and finally, um, how does setting actually influence the effects of MDMA? So I did an online-based study. Um, I've, uh, we've distributed um, uh, the survey on drug-related forums like Blue Light, Erwid, Facebook, um, and it went actually quite quickly uh, with the MDMA group, but we had a bit of a problem recruiting the controls, but we managed to go do it quite quickly, actually. Um, so we've recruited six, over 600 people, half of them dropped out, uh, which is expected. Um, we've, we've excluded 15 cases due to a large proportion of missing data, um, and we've ended up with 296 participants Half of them, uh, 158, were allocated to the MDMA group, and these were people who have experienced MDMA um, at least on three occasions, uh, at least once in the past year. Um, and they've also they were polydrug users, so they obviously had experience with other substances as well. Um, in particular, uh, things like cannabis, uh, LSD, psilocybin. Um, the controls uh, were people who had no previous experience with psychedelics, uh, in particular MDMA, uh, but they had some experience with cannabis, obviously alcohol and um, nicotine. Um, so we've asked participants to complete a range of psychological measures. We've, um, apart from the drug history we've collected, uh, they've, they've answered questions with regards to their motives of 
uh, uh, MDMA use, so the motives questionnaire, uh, as well as perceived psychological and neg uh, positive and ne negative effects of, uh, of MDMA, the self-reflection in insight scale, uh, so the scale that measures one's ability to be self-reflective, uh, gain insight, um, as well as um, the new FFI, which is a very common measure of psychological uh, of personality traits, um, as, well, as well as trait emotion intelligence scale and the severity of dependence scale, specifically for the use of MDMA. So, thinking about um, a participant, but our two groups, there were no group differences in terms of age. The average age was about 29.8, 29.7 um, between groups. Um, there was a disproportion in terms of gender. So over 57% of uh, MDMA group were males in comparison to um, less than 30% of controls. Um, slightly higher uh, percentage of uh, MDMA users were, uh, were not in the relationship in comparison to the control. So there are some differences in between the groups. Um, in terms of problematic use, and in generally speaking about the, 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 the profile of drug use, um, less than 44% of MDMA users displayed some symptoms of MDMA dependence, but they were quite low, actually. So the cutoff score was about um, five, and um, they were usually around five, six. There were occasional cases of 11, 12, but most of them were actually quite low. Um, less than 3% of the sample had some form of addiction treatment. Uh, this wasn't in relation to um, MDMA, just generally speaking about any form of addiction. Um, most of them were light to moderate uh, users of MDMA. Light was defined as up to 10 times, um, moderate was up to 40 times. Uh, there were also no group differences in uh, mental health. So we've asked them questions around, have you ever been diagnosed with things like um, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, um, and we, we didn't find any differences between the groups. Right, um, so thinking about the personality profile, um, so something really interesting that we found out was that um, MDMA users uh, presented with higher level of openness um, and self-reflection in comparison to non-MDMA users. They also experienced a lower level of conscientiousness and neuroticism. So really interesting results, but I'm going to explain to you what it actually means, because I'm, I'm quite aware that not everyone here uh, knows much about um, psychology. Um, so openness um, is this tendency, as you probably know, to um, be creative, curious, uh, broad-minded, to be open to new experiences. So obviously, as, as it was predicted, um, uh, MDMA users were quite high on that scale in comparison to uh, non-MDMA users. Um, secondly, is conscientiousness. So this is the concept of being quite Organized, someone who is quite, con uh, quite who scores quite high on conscientiousness is quite organized, careful, punctual, uh, follow the, the set of rules uh, in the society. So, MD MDMA users were quite uh, towards the other end of the spectrum. Um, and finally, neuroticism, which is, which I think is quite a, a striking result. Um, so, MDMA users were basically. Um, um, presented with lower level of neuroticism, which is defined as tendency to respond with anxiety, um, feeling insecure, uh, so it's quite likely correlated with mental health problems. Um, so MDMA users, again, scored much, much lower than um, the controls. Um, Hmm, okay, moved on the self. Um, think about moving now to the set and, uh, s setting of MDMA use and the effects of MDMA. So what we found out that the people who've reported using MDMA in a dance setting, and a dance setting is defined as um, clubbing, uh, music festivals, they've experienced higher level of um, effects of MDMA uh, concerning energy and euphoria as well as dancing effects, so they've, they've reported um, that dancing um, was experienced as more pleasurable um, in, in that setting. Um, moving to home setting, um, so funnily enough, the home setting wasn't associated with any 
um, particular effect of MDMA. So it wasn't um, specific to any effect. However, um, people who've, um, who've had the tendency to use MDMA in a home setting, uh, it's, it's quite, actually quite um, a low correlation, uh, 0.17, but it's quite it's still significant. Uh, that suggests they presented with a higher level of emotion intelligence um, and higher level of conscientiousness. And as I mentioned earlier, conscientiousness is related with, um, with this tendency to uh, obey the rules. So maybe something about being uh, socially appropriate. Um, who knows? But these, these were two important um, uh, correlations. Okay, so now moving on to predictors of self-reflection and insight. So this is this was like my first question. I really wanted to find out. So what will actually predict um, people's ability to be self-reflective and insightful? I think it's particularly important with relation to um, using MDMA in the clinical context. Um, so what we found out uh, was that certain per personal qualities like openness. Um, emotion, intelligence, extroversion, and neuroticism, as well as MDMA use in itself, were predictors of self-reflection and insight. Um, they explain altogether about 35% of the variance of self-reflection and insight. So this is hierarchical regression analysis. Um, so when we, um, in the second step, we, we um, included MDMA use to find out what was the role of MDMA in itself, and it predicted about 2%, sorry, predicted about 2% of the variance of self-reflection and insight. So it's still significant, even though it's small, but it, it's a significant predictor of, of self-reflection as a trait. Okay, and what we did next, uh, we rerun the analysis just using MDMA group. And what we found out that the predictors of, um, uh, of self-reflection and insight f just for the MDMA group was openness, emotion intelligence, as well as self-insight effects of MDMA. So people who've experienced um, high levels of, of, um, of uh, self-insight effects of MDMA were more likely to score quite high on um, the trait of um, the, the ability to be self-reflective. Um, so all of those elements explains 37% of the variance of self-reflection and insight trait. Um, but um, self-insight effects of MDMA on itself explain 5%, so again, slightly more than in the previous one, so it's more specific. Um, so yeah, I was quite happy to uh, find out um, those results. Um, so just in conclusion, um, well, it looks like set and setting does matter. <laughs> um, but it's not just, as, as, we, as I said, it's not about just about the drug. Um, it's also about personality, also what we're bringing to the experience, um, emotion, intelligence, as well as motivation for drug use, seem to play a really important role in, in that experience, even among uh, recreational users. Um, well, we know that MDMA might be associated with self-reflection and insight, but due to the correlational um, nature of the study, we can't really assess the direction of this relationship, so we need some prospective designs to further investigate that relationship. All right, and uh, just to say thank you to my supervisors, uh, Dr. Edita Monica Hunter from Canterbury Christchurch University, and uh, Dr. Ben Sessa, who will be presenting in a minute. So thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you, Monica, very much so. And uh, are there any questions about the topics of the lecture? Hi. Hi. I was wondering if you're starting to get some sort of a clue as to how to use things like personality traits to set up the setting and prepare the person's mindset mm. to have the, the, the better opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really good point, actually. I haven't thought about it, but... Uh, there is some application in, from, the, from those findings. So we know that being open-minded, obviously, is one of the things that <clears throat> enables the experience to be more effective. So trying to, to say to someone just to be curious about the experience can be quite quite effective way. Also, trying to manage the anxiety in itself. So we know that neuroticism is associated um, um, in a way with... with, with, with um, with quite negative effects. So, so trying to, to in, in some way, be quite less, in a way, maybe less, um, more open about 
the experience and, and, and less anxious will, will be the way to, to, to go forward with it.